Well here we are. Looks like it was successful. Build was completed successfully. Took it uh, 7 hours and 21 minutes on this machine to build 89,212 tasks. And it actually built 100% um, without an issue, which is pretty standard because we were building a device that it was designed for. So, what just happened? What um, transpired, I guess, would be a way to, way to look at that. I know we've talked about this in other videos before, but I just kind of want to go back over how this process works. So when you say make, well first you, you do uh, that, we'll look at a history, of, we just actually go back up here. We see build environment setup dot shell. So the very first thing that we did is it's saying it wants to source build environment setup dot shell. So that's saying here, the build folder, and we see environment setup dot shell. And this is actually a link symbolically going elsewhere, but we'll just go ahead and open with gedit, take a look at it real quick. So this is the first thing that it did. Um, first, it uh, adds the following functions, things like lunch, C root, um, and all of these different commands. So it gives those to your, your environment, and then it goes through and it checks to see if there's scripts in uh, local uh, folders and sets those up. Um, notice there's some readmes and things in here. It sets the tool chains to the different places depending what you're using. Sets up the emulator um, and it uh, sets up uh, all the different functions getting ready to actually perform the build. Then the next command we ran was lunch, which of course this had set up, um, which lunch gives you the lunch menu choices, which goes through the different choices and sets them up, and then it looks through the different devices and sees what, uh, what choices would you like. It says which would you like is what it asked us. And sets a few defaults if you don't choose anything and then allows you to choose from the menu choices. So once you choose one, then it's all set up to build based on these arguments. And then you run the command of make. So make, we're back here in the Android Pi directory because that's where we are, Android Pi, we run make. Notice here there's this make file. So we open that up, right? And all it does is it includes build make core main.make. That's all this file does. It says, hey, go get this file and run it. So we go to build, we go to make core, and we find this main.make. So let's open that up. So this file then sets a few things, the build shell, bin bash, gets everything ready if you're on Linux, if you're on uh, Macintosh, uh, different things, sets up uh, the Song UI, or Sunji UI, not sure how you pronounce that. But anyways, it then sets up and says it's going to run uh, the build make core files, it's going to uh, look at the config.make file, for instance, config.make, which goes through and does more of its own setup and grabs more files and says, hey, I want you to use host static library.make or static library.make or you know, all these files in here that are in this core folder and it grabs those and starts setting those up. Like for instance, here's this host static library dot make that we just talked about. And it goes through and grabs things. So it's kind of like a domino effect where running this environment setup is like you set up all the dominoes and then you run this make file and this is just tipping over the first domino. And that first domino 
grabs the next domino and some of these dominoes split into forks just like you've seen where uh, people set up dominoes and they have several different pathways it might go two or three different directions and so this one for instance this main.make it's going to grab this config.make it's going to um, let's see config.make more config.makes of different types for tools for tests and it goes and it grabs all of those make files uh, dex preop.make right it starts definitions.make it starts grabbing those and those continue to fork and before long you have 89,212 different dominoes that need to be toppled and all of that starts with this environment setup setting up your dominoes which gives you the lunch command right which is going to choose which essentially which domino path you're going to take because you're building a certain device and then each one of these files is the tipping over dominoes that grab more and more configuration files and more and more library files and it builds all of those things that eventually get to the device folder and in the device folder you have the device for instance we just built Marlin so device Google Marlin right here and eventually what happens is it gets to this Android make file and it says hey you said if you said I want to build Marlin right target device then this directory the directory of the device is going to be the local uh, path and it says call or build all the make files under this local path so now it's like okay now I'm in this folder and I have to build all the make files that are in here like uh, device Marlin right here right and device sailfish or um, these various ones here where is device common dot make so eventually it goes through and it's grabbing all of these ones like device Marlin and it says hey I need you to build device Google Marlin device common dot make as well as doing all of these things so it does all these things and it grabs device common dot make and it says okay I want you to do all of these things right um, but while you're doing that we also need to grab some other files and so it just keeps uh, keeps knocking over the dominoes and making more and more uh, more and more pathways of the different make files to complete these 89,212 tasks for this particular device. Different devices will have a different number of tasks because they'll have different hardware, different things that need to get built, different um, pre-builts already made for them and so it goes out and it grabs those things. One of the things that one of these files will point to typically is they will also point to inheriting products if it exists the vendor Google devices Marlin device vendor Marlin dot make so it's jumping out of this device folder going back to the uh, main folder and if it's here it'll grab the vendor folder right and it will build uh, with those vendor blobs now what we just built right here does not have the vendor files that typically would be here which surprises me because they didn't add that to the list of things for it to do um, so typically when you build for device you have to make sure that you download the vendor files that go with it uh, hopefully if your um, ROM that you're building for instance lineage or whatever the case may be will actually specify where to get that vendor file and it will download it for you a lot of times you can find this in the device folder with a um, dependency file that will be in here we don't see one in here uh, for this device but it will have a dependency file which says hey I need this folder to exist for me to build here's where you go get it and it'll actually go get that for you automatically and typically that's what uh, your developers are doing for you when they put this stuff together
So lots of lots of things happening behind the scenes going on uh, to build this successful build. Now we finished building it. So what does it look like? Well, it's in the out folder, and we go target product Marlin because that's what we just built, and we see we have a bunch of these image files. So these image files get put together. Um, you can flash them with Fastboot or um, or similar tools, Flashify, something like that, to put them on. Typically, Fastboot is the method of use. But what we're used to seeing is we typically have an OTA. So to do that, we typically write MKA OTA package. Let's see. And that did not work. So I have to look for a second to see what's the uh, what's the usual method here in Android 9 real quick. So it looks like instead of MKA OTA package, it's just make OTA package. So I think I might have been confused with the uh, with something other than that. For instance, you can MKA like a system image or something like that. So if you type this make OTA package, it's going to take all of these files, these user data and the system image and the boot image, and it's going to put it into one zip file, just like you're used to seeing to flash with uh, Team Win Recovery Project or something like that. So I'm going to let this complete, and then we'll uh, you'll uh, have an OTA package to work with.